Now we have to move to the second speaker by Dr. Rao Ijwati. Uh, you know, I, uh, Dr. Rao is a very familiar face to all of you. He is a very a popular uh, teacher, popular writer, and the moderator uh, in Pelosi family. And uh, he has uh, shown the, his excellency across the country and abroad also. Uh, and Dr. Rao has already moderated more than 250 webinars in Pelosi family. And Dr. Rao, uh, if you go to the, uh, the academic activities of Dr. Rao, then you can say Dr. Rao, after passing B.Sc. in Physics Honors, uh, has joined the uh, main University of Delhi, where he completed M.A. and M.Phil in Philosophy, and he proved her excellency in both science and philosophy. After completing his M.Phil degree, he joined as a probation officer in Punjab National Bank at Rajasthan. Then he left the job and joined in Odisha Education Service as an assistant professor in philosophy in GM College, Odisha. And till now, he has uh, 23, more than 23 years of teaching experience in different government colleges of Odisha. Being a popular writer, he has authored 15 books in logic and philosophy, which have gained popularity not only in the state of Odisha, but in across the country. He has authored two books for IS, a preliminary students. Dr. Rao has also contributed many papers in national and international seminars and webinars. He has contributed many papers, both in national and international uh, journals. I don't want to speak much of him because being a writer, being a speaker, being an organizer, being a, being a brilliant student, he has excellence in different fields. I don't want to speak much of him and today he has added the glory of philosophy family across the country with his brilliant moderation and you know all his books are gaining a popularity among the students of our country, among the teachers of our country and you can find his uh, books in India's best online shopping uh, stores also. I don't want to reflect upon all the things and uh, Dr. Rao's uh, uh, specialization includes advanced logic, philosophy of science and uh, religion. Uh, with this, I welcome Dr. Rao. I request Dr. Rao to speak on the schedule topic, human dignity. So, Dr. Sorangi in the first session focused on the dignity of women and Dr. Rao in the second session will focus on the dignity of humanity. Over to Dr. Rao. Over to Dr. Rao. Namaskar uh, and good evening everybody. Uh, thank you uh, Dr. Kailas Mahanana sir for your uh, kind words. Well, uh, 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 thank you, uh, philosophy family. Though I am in the committee of philosophy family, but I should thank uh, uh, Dr. Kailas Maharana sir and Professor Pramuth Madas for uh, feeling me fit to deliver a lecture on um, humanity, the highest dignity. Well, uh, this is the title that has been suggested by uh, Professor Pramuth Madas. Um, well, I couldn't find much time to reflect on this, but based on uh, my uh, basic understanding. I have tried to develop um, uh, uh, this lecture, well, uh, well, well, it's up to you and how to, uh, I can even improve on this uh, based on um, 
the discussions that are going to follow after my talk well let's see how far i could justify this title so i have something uh, to say something like this we are all human beings not animals so humanity or humanness should be our essence but instead we say that the common and essential qualities of man are animality and rationality this means that man has not divorced himself from animality or the animal qualities and tendencies as regards man believes that he has taken an upper hand over other animate things in this creation we should note that it is this region that has really made men and has also spoiled men i mean to say region makes men and region breaks men by the use or the misuse of reason the problems mostly center around the misuse of reason and professor pramod das was pointing out that animals don't make such mistake these mistakes do happen with human beings because we have reason and we have a capacity to misuse reason there lies a lot of problem and one more problem comes from the area where we give value to the sentiments and this being so sentiments override reason and that too is also very dangerous now we are in a state of affairs where though we feel we are uh, say we have contacts we are connected but really we are divided in the name of religion race language caste creed culture political allegiance etc etc though the intellectuals thinkers philosophers and even humanists try to address this problem they could only cure the symptoms but they are not able to cure the disease that the society is having and it's a, a great disease i should say the crisis today is the claim for superiority everyone everybody claims for superiority made be for wealth made be for power made be for fame made be in the name of religion made be in the name of language may be in the name of race so everybody wants superiority and that we can find at different levels at the local levels at the national levels at the international levels the recent russia ukraine war is a reflection of the crisis that man is going through now these are the days where a nation is adjudged by its war potentialities by its war capabilities a nation is not identified by its culture by its tradition by its loving people okay now these are the days when superiority the power decided by the power centers based on one's different strategies different strength and as i said this russia ukraine war is a pointer at that it's a source of strength you see 
many lives are lost thousands of lives are lost somebody has lost a father somebody has lost his son somebody has lost his her husband but who cares who is there to wipe their tears people may be the world will awaken when the loss becomes too much and it is irreparable and then we come to a understanding table to resolve this deadlock why not the deadlock why 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 not the understanding table the peace resolution mechanism beforehand because man is so ego centered is so power centered not that he doesn't understand the value system not that he doesn't have the value uh, values in him not it is not that it is only that the ego the power strength the power strength overrides everything the reason fails even though there is a great war it has to finally end up with a peace negotiation some day it has to occur why not start up start up with a, a a table conference to resolve the conflict why should we wait for the loss of thousands of lives lot of bloodshed the destruction of a country okay the tears the agony the pain the people have to face so this is a great problem that the present world is facing so so we it's a, it's a time when we all sort stand in need of a values to bring one and all together to a common ideology the ideology being the recognition of the essence of humanity that is there in us but somehow we have forgotten the present world if at all the question of humanity arises we are open with two exclusive alternatives one is either to offer universal brotherhood and friendship or fight for the total extinction maybe you see that the way the ukraine war the russia ukraine war is mounting up it may take any shape and more and more political partners may enter and there is a risk of a third world war until it is too late we have to address this problem now taking this as the background let us look into the status of man man at the individual level man at the social level you see as we all know man thinks of himself first it's natural he thinks of his children he thinks of his family he takes lot of say belief he, he constructs a lot of belief in his own children own family that they will serve as the same for him in the later part of his life and finally he recognizes that the children whom he nurtured they are the cause of the crisis of his crisis in the old age this is an instance to suggest i'm not generalizing there are cases again to think of a man who takes all his say 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 earnings to build a house to live in peace during the old days and that house becomes the bone of contention and finally he has to leave that house to stay in a old age home these are the facts of life i'm not generalizing well if uh, uh, just these are the instances even a single instance i say it's a crisis and instances are many i, I should say so this is the crisis that man is passing through if we look at the society we feel as if the society is going on with a certain philosophy it has a certain pattern 
it has a certain institutional framework it is preaching certain thing but in real terms it is something different the real matters of fact are something different we think of a philosophy of a certain state or a culture or a certain locality but the real facts are something different because these days man is not speaking from the heart he is speaking from the mind and i said you the misuse of mind is very dangerous and the crisis today is well you may disagree those who are able to mingle many things okay confuse things play with others okay playing with sentiments of others feelings of others they are better placed there is a havoc all around you raise the voice you will be proved accused so where are you placed you say this is the culture that we have you simply think this is the culture this is the pattern and you think i am going to support the pattern but to finally feel that you are lost and you are proved as the culprit to the great problem that your that, that mankind is facing through passing through and in the society we come across instances where the sentiments as i say sentiments also play a great role where man's rationality is somehow taken back is put into the cold storage why i say so because at various times we are guided by the geo sentiment maybe the social sentiment maybe the linguistic sentiment maybe the religious sentiment and we are guided by the sentiment as if the sentiment is everything and the reason has no play uh, 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 no role to play say for instance we are carried by a religious sentiment say suppose a religious uh, fundamental uh, fundamentalist they announce that the let hindus all over the world unite or let the christians unite or let the muslims unite so this is religious centric and this is creating a problem for everyone who is the opponent the opponent is none but a fellow human being we are carried by a sentiment and who is suffering innocent human beings and when we are going to realize this this is the problem that we need to address and again the problems that center around sentiments is that these sentiments land us in certain dogmas and these dogmas prevent us from having a free thinking they don't allow us to cross a certain boundary the boundaries are fixed and you cannot cross the boundary so another problem so that's at individual and the social levels man is lost in various conflicts and he is confused also in resolving the con conflicts contradictions because he finds a society he finds people around where there is no parity in thought speech and action somebody is speaking so good so nice but he has but the intentions are something different so there is no parity so with this framework how can we claim the essence of humanity so this is the problem that we need to think of deep you see we have contacts lot of contacts lot of people around okay and we think 
these contacts are true relationship and we, we, we fall into a trap because the contacts are never connections there is a difference between contact and a connection the modern man have only contacts no connections connection is something internal it is something that has a feel for the other it is a sort of empathy wherein man gets lost in the other but that connectivity is not there in the present world we are just having a contact but no real connection so having said this because we have a limited time so let let me let me let me think of certain norms certain frameworks that can serve as the basis for humanity to flourish well i have thought of certain say norms which would help us in that direction and that's the effort that i have made here now suppose doing something to our own self hurts us and we don't feel good why should we do that same thing to other that will give pain to other there needs to we need to have that understanding what is that don't do anything to others that we don't do our own self we should treat the neighbors the people around well there is a need for the concern for the well being of others you see as i said modern world is full of man and they say they are fully busy okay you are busy all right you are not do, not going to do good to anybody well it's all right but at least don't harm anybody don't harm anybody if you don't love being hated being hurted by somebody it becomes your responsibility your duty not to hate not to hurt others if somebody hurts you somebody hates you that hurts so it is your responsibility not to hate not to hurt others now whenever we speak whenever you carry on an action we should always come up with a proposition whether my thought whether my action or whether my sentiment hurt somebody will it hurt somebody if this is the question that i gather to my mind that would be a greatest proposition for all humanity that would bring a parity in thought speech and action we feel free to comment others to say bad of others we should know that's why there is a need that we should know ourselves first before trying to say something about others so these are the basic frameworks i'm talking of as we need respect for ourselves we need to learn to respect others as it is said you get what you give you get what you give so there is no problem in giving good to others well you get good or not immaterial but what is the problem in giving the good what is the problem in dealing affairs in a uh, fair terms what is the problem in treating men with a sense of fairness and justice is there any problem there is no problem but why we are divided because of the misuse of reason and that is the notorious element leading to the loss of humanity and to add more of the sentiments and actions that we need to carry we need to judge somebody's actions 
not by how he acts or the way he acts but you should judge him by the intention of his action and that intention is very crucial in judging that action to be human or moral and also while dealing with others while dealing with the actions of others or the assessments of others we should come up with three standards whether his action or whether his expression has a long range utility standard whether it is uh, going to affect a larger uh, uh, community of people for a longer period whether it is helpful for greater number of people whatever somebody is doing whether it is in parity with the general law standard if at all it is not with the general law standard okay is it going to help the people at large or say if some something has deviated the from the standard and it is there to produce some good okay even though it has divorced itself to a, an extent from the general standard is it able to deliver some sort of long range utility standard for the greatest number so these are the very issues that we need to take while dealing people while dealing others and the most important element that you should look into is as kant even pointed out in his maxims of morality treat humanity either in thyself or in others always as ends and never as means only so treat human beings individuals as ends with lot of respect and dignity okay and that is possible through love and love has a great capacity to break the boundaries that we have artificially created amongst ourselves okay and if we take the side of gandhi ji who asserts that love thy enemy that's why in the philosophy of gandhi ji there is no enemy because he says even he says he says for satyagrahi there is no enemy so love thy enemy so love could be a great force in the service of humanity because there is no enemy <coughs> the loss of humanity occurs when there is an opponent but when you are connected and if that can uh, uh, when you are connected okay there is uh, no case of uh, loss of humanity and love would be a greater force to establish humanity a human sense now coming to the last point which i want to highlight a bit more that everybody of us without exception seek happiness for ourselves but if we direct this happiness to the social happiness or to the happiness of others to the community to the society to the nation then would put be a greater strength it would be a greater force in the service of humanity here <coughs> it comes to my mind assertion made by dr apj abdul kalam who once asserted it is not important <coughs> how much happy you are it is not important how much happy you are it is important how many are happy because of you if this becomes our aim and objective we hope not only to make others happy okay in the process we get totally lost in the happiness of others this is true in humanity in action as a feel being lost in the happiness of others is the true expression of humanity 
in action. Now the question may arise, how could one make others happy? By one's virtuous actions, by, by, by the sense of love as I spoke, by the sense of compassion, by the acts of charity, by respecting others, by service to others, by being kind to others, having a sense of love, sense of care, sense of share. So these are the virtues that would really make others happy. And as I said, in the process, an individual gets lost in the happiness of others. And this would give a scope for rising above the ordinary ways of living and understanding to lead a life of purity and discipline. And, then, and, 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 and in such a life of purity, there can be no thought, no speech, no action that is inhuman. I mean to say, in such a state of purity, there would be a total parity in thought, speech and action. So, here, one may raise a question. How are, 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 do we have the responsibility of making each and every individual happy? Well, I am not saying that. And that is not possible too. My point is, yes, it is true that we cannot make everybody happy. At least, we can make at least the minimum people around us happy. There goes a saying that we cannot help everyone. We cannot help everyone. But everyone can help someone. If this becomes the message, if this becomes the ideology of man, maybe we can do wonders. And speaking of humanity, I see that the Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali begins with Yama and Niyama, the first two steps. Well, I restrict myself to the first step, Yama, the restraints. If we are strictly practicing to these restraints, I think much of humanity is restored. There would be an establishment of a human sense in this world. How? You see, what are these Yamas or restraints? Being truthful, being non-violent, okay, non-stealing, and Aparigraha and Brahmacharya. Being truthful doesn't mean that you need to be truthful in every count. So you need to be truthful to your own self first. Being truthful to the society. Being truthful to the people around. And much of falsity has spoiled the universe. And having said this, I would like to say that being truthful doesn't mean that you will be speaking the truth at being truthful doesn't mean that you will be truthful at every point of time, every instance. There may be instances where the falsity may be better placed than speaking the truth. So, truth, being truthful be taken in a contextual sense would contribute a lot to humanity. Number one. Number two, non-violent. One should be non-violent in thought, speech and action. And this is all, you see, being non-violent in thought, speech and action, what does it imply? It implies a human sense. Okay. And this preserves humanity. Having said this, I say there are exceptions. Where violence is better placed Okay, how, say for instance, when a soldier raises his arms 
not with an intention of killing the enemy but with an intention of protecting the innocent lives the innocent countrymen so this is not an act of violence you see the intention he has raised arms okay he has raised the gun not with an intention of killing the enemy but with an intention of protecting the fellow human being the innocent civilians so that that is the message even the second yama that is ahimsa can also be a great force in the service of humanity and astaya astaya normally we mean non stealing <laughs> but interpretations differ you see suppose suppose something which doesn't belong to us we have an eye on that that is also inhuman these days in the corporate world sometimes i say this also something that has been generated something that has been developed by a junior member of staff has been taken by the senior executives and branded by their names as if they have developed that project so this is astaya that this is this is this is this is the violation this is stealing this is stealing because somebody's ideas have been taken by you and you are presenting as if that has come to you and recently i have been informed there are many writers okay who take the writings of others and publish it the songs you say okay actually that the mental creations of somebody else but because they don't have fame they don't have name they have to sell them at a lower price to a reputed person and the reputed person making bit of corrections presents himself as if it is his own so this is again stealing and this is a case of loss of humanity i say the third one the fourth one non partition you see there is no end to desires okay if a human being is never content and this multi and, and, and the seeking for more of desires and it multiplies it keeps on going because you want more and more and that would be accumulating okay factor for you at the loss of okay something for somebody else that would have been uh, an asset would have been a livelihood for somebody but you have taken because of your non contentment so that is if that if that that, that becomes a practice being contentment having a contentment having a feeling of contentment if that becomes a practice of not possessing more than that we have more than that we require and that would be a case for human and lastly brahmacharya brahmacharya we should go something in, uh, we, should, we should take an interpretation that it is a control the total control over the body mind and the senses and that would be a great case to bring in perfection in human beings and these restraints together would allow a natural flow of humanity believe me i think this would really help these restraints at least practice this way that's that's why gandhi ji did not go to this ashtanga marga he just restricted himself to yama and that did wonders and that i reassert here that if at least we are practicing this yama we, okay we are practicing this restraints okay that is we, at, at least we are um, truthful we are, okay non violent and all those that have listed out that would be uh, that would all be in a great service for humanity so what is humanity all about so humanity is all about being compassionate being generous going beyond own selfish interest to encompass to see others in you and yourself in others so that is the need of the hour so having said this i come to a point where i feel humanity is nothing but a realization of a universal essence flowing in each one of us 
humanity is nothing but a universal essence because we are human beings and there is a flow of universal essence in each one of us and those who are able to feel this essence are really humanists those who feel this essence are really the humanists the ordinary beings think of themselves okay if, if something we are going to get the ordinary man will claim for himself but a humanist will make a leap from i to b humanist will never claim something for himself first he takes a we sense he takes a we sense he takes a ethical sense he takes a moral sense he never makes a claim for i he claim he makes a claim for a greater claim for we he jumps he makes a leap from i to we this is a human being but still a, a true humanist jumps to we and that is humanity all about now i as i said before even humanity does is a feeling of oneness everywhere i mean when i say everywhere it means everywhere everywhere in this universe no way we are detached every everywhere in every, with every being with every creation we are connected this reminds me of an assertion by guru uh, uh, gor gopal das who said we are not we are not human beings having spiritual experiences i repeat we are not human beings having spiritual experiences we are spiritual beings having human experiences okay we are spiritual beings having human experiences we are not the body but is being but how many realize this there is a need to realize this there is a need to realize the connections that we have in this cosmos okay the different connections that we have in the cosmos in the cosmos and ultimately try to find to have ultimately try to connect ourselves to our own spiritual nature which we truly are so the message is there is a need for realizing the different connections with everything that out there in this universe in this cosmos and also finding a way to ultimately connect ourselves to our spiritual nature and gor gopal das informs this connectivity gives us power to spread happiness and joy around the world now now normally when we talk of humanity we say it is treating human beings well no it is not that humanity is all about an attitude as i said attitude of love respect reverence not only for animate not say not only for human beings it is for all animate and inanimate animate entities out there in the world because we are connected with both living and non living entities okay and we should feel this connectivity because man has somehow lost his human sense he has polluted air he has polluted water that's why there is lot of cry of protecting nature protecting environment that's how man has gone he in human so when we talk of humanity it is not just asserting say uh, uh, having a good relation treating human beings well it is not that it is beyond treating human beings well the new humanists will speak that it is not just treating the human beings well it is all about treating everything out there around you it's it's all it's it's, it's all about everything around you and you need to treat all of them well so it is only then you can be a humanist now having said all this in order to justify the title i have gone through recently uh, a book by uh, guru gor gopal das it's a uh, life's uh, amazing secrets well this is not connected with this issue but i have tried to link what gor gopal das has said 
he informs as, as, as professor das has suggested the title humanity the highest dignity and i have found a message here in gor gopal das uh, a distinction of five types of people the first kind of person is a person who cannot see good at all who cannot see the good at all okay he focus he is his focus would be on the bad and also tries to magnify it. okay gor gopal das cites a very beautiful example in the neighborhood there is a couple newly arrived couple in the neighborhood the house lady watches the neighborhood lady drawing claws on the string in the veranda okay and she finds every time that she dries the clothes very dirty she complains to, to her husband to see how nasty that lady is she doesn't know how to wash clothes the clothes looks very dirty and she is drying okay and this goes on for certain time one day again on the breakfast table this lady very lady notices suddenly notices oh you see this day this lady the the the, the neighborhood lady you see oh oh how clean she has uh, washed the clothes today oh, oh maybe every day i'm commenting on her maybe some vibration has reached her maybe today is she is she is the drying the clothes and the clothes are so clean now the husband without rising from his seat he says he says he simply smiles and says early this morning i have cleaned the glass windows early morning i have cleaned the glass windows what is the message here the message here is we see through our dirty eyes we see through our dirty mind and not cleaning our mind not think not 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 realizing that there is lot of dirt that is covering our mind we spit we throw mud at others so this is the first kind of people and these people are the people who serve to a great loss in humanity because they never try to focus on the good always be pointing at bad all that is wrong they feel that that is bad but in fact their vision is blurred their mind is blurred there is dirt inside them and they fail to realize that and this is a great cause for the loss of humanity number 1 number 2 he talks of persons who see persons who see both good and bad but only focus on the bad they see both good and bad but only focus on the bad and very beautifully he tries to explain this by a small example a story one day a man goes to big bazaar to say a mall to purchase some items so he was pushing his trolley collecting the items going through the list what his wife has given to purchase from the um, from from the mall suddenly his trolley gets uh, struck to uh, a trolley another trolley okay so he stay uh, he he stands for a minute and sees what is that what is that he finds a dog is pulling the trolley collecting the items that his master has uh, asked her to collect she is collecting very nicely the items that her master requires and the dogs after having all the items goes to the billing counter okay pays certain currency and that billing cashier gives her 10 dollars less but the dog finds a bit less in money so she says so she scratches the pant of the teller and simply barks the cashier understands well he has given less 10 dollars less so gives the money to the dog and dog goes back okay now this man is very curious about the dog he follows the dog and he finds that the dog enters to a very big apartment it is on the 18th floor the dog reaches the lift pushes the button goes into the lift and this man also follows the dog <coughs> presses the 18th number button in the lift and she goes okay she knocks the door of the owner of the house 
the owner, okay, the master, comes with a bang, shouts loud at the dog, and with at the big bang, see, he he closes the door. So this man. Oh, who finds oh the dog has done a lot of great service to this master and the master is scolding the dog okay so this man with all curiosity knocks the dog uh, knocks the door again and inquires why he is scolding the dog when the dog has done such a great service to you the master says this is this foolish dog this is for the second time she has committed a great mistake she is never taking the key of the door and this is for the second time that i have got to lift from a chair to open the dog for this dog okay the master says this is this this dog has done a great mistake this is for the second time she has forgotten to take the key of the door and and, and it made me to rise from my say from a chair to open the door for her so you see this is the man just ignores the good in the dog and focuses on the bad these are the second type of people that we have in the society and these are again dangerous people and they are the great barricades again i say in the service of human beings in the service of humanity then gopal das speaks of third kind of people who can see both good and bad but are they are neutral to both they are just indifferent to both and um, gopal das says that uh, such people are very rare and uh, nearly impossible to find such people well um, he They ignore somehow this kind of people because he says such type of people are very rare. Then he talks of a fourth kind of persons, a persons of type four, a person who sees good and bad, but consciously chooses to neglect the bad by focusing on the good. Persons of type four are person who see persons who see both good and bad. but consciously choose to neglect the bad by focusing on the good and and these are very and again this is a very tough task it's not an easy task it's a very tough task and he again explains this by a small story and a real story aditya birla was having a uh, uh, working with uh, say uh, he's having a um, um, uh, working with say hindalco industries he was the ceo Aditya Birla was the CEO of um, uh, <coughs> um, Hindalco Industries. Okay, an executive, a senior level executive, who has done a lot of service to the company, by his sheer mistake, a silly mistake, brings a lot billion dollars lost to the company. By a silly mistake of the senior executive, the company has to bear a billion dollars. loss there was a tension in the company that this man will be fired this man may be sure okay or this man will be say losing his job there was a lot of tension around but what aditya birla did is he saw the total chart of what this man has done for the company over the period of time he made a list of the entire service of this man the senior executive and he found there are numerous cases where this man has brought lot of fame for the company lot of profits for the company huge profits for the company and he focused on what good things that this man has done and in focusing on what this man has done what good things this man has done he totally forgot that he has recently committed a mistake that brought billion dollars loss billion dollars loss to the company simply forget so this is the fourth kind of people who have a tendency of focusing on the good in order to ignore the bad so this is the people of type 4 and people of type 5 are those who cannot see people of type 5 are who cannot see bad at all whatever good they see they see and try to magnify that but gor gopal das informs such people are spiritual people they are saints they are sages we are not concerned about them okay we cannot we cannot be such good okay we cannot be saints everybody cannot be a saint a seer okay so guru gopal das gor gopal das focuses on the people of type 4 okay what is that you see both good and bad 
but you focus on the good to make all that is bad disappear but what is the normal human tendency we gossip a lot about the evils about the bad about the wrongs that people commit and we hardly discuss something somebody has done good thing somebody has done this is the general human tendency if somebody commits a mistake it will be spread like a wildfire but if somebody has done a good service a good thing okay a good performance nobody is going to discuss that this is general human tendency what what is what is the speciality in people of type 4 the people of the type of aditya birla so the type 4 people are the people who might think are the ideal people okay who can focus who can see both good and bad but the focus is always on the good and with this focus on the good there is a natural elimination of the bad and this is the highest state that mankind should strive for and this is the dignity that professor das may be thinking of and i think this if at all we can transform ourselves to the people to a person of type 4 maybe we are doing a great service to humanity if we transform ourselves the way aditya birla took the situation that occurred in the company if we mend our ways of focusing all that is good but not ignoring the bad automatically the bad disappears because our focus is on the good and automatically all that is wrong all that is bad in others gets nullified and that is the true humanity and if we are able to achieve that that would be that would define the real success in man and that would justify a real flow of humanness of or the real flow of humanity in humanness and that would justify ourselves to be called as human beings otherwise we are just animals thank you thank you thank you all thank you very much the okay, thanks uh, so much sir for your uh, uh, very beautiful exposition on humanity the highest dignity and uh, you said that uh, how being lost uh, in the happiness of others is a true expression of uh, humanity and uh, feeling of oneness feeling uh, the feeling uh, that is focusing on the goodness of others the humanity and how uh, uh, how humanity is a relation of universal essence in each one of us sir uh, today your talk is uh, very comprehensive and a lot uh, have to be uh, has to be uh, said on it and uh, this talk reflects our stand on this globe why you are, why we are born in it and what is the purpose of this world of taking part in this world and uh, you, by reflecting upon uh the um, uh, um, russia ukraine war you said that it is a crisis for humanity is lost a nation is identified with its concern for others or other country but the greater cause the greater cause is now uh, that uh, as we are seeking for the humanity we are searching for humanity and uh, uh, sir really it is sad it is uh, it is it is very much sad that Uh, uh, the con- uh, uh, the conscience of man has grown with the times, but today all that we see around us reflects that we are becoming inhuman. All the countries now are being devoting to the cultivation of the world spirit by scientific cunning, and we say that we are going for, we are searching for humanity, and. how it is possible how it possible so now your talk is very sensitive today it gives us an opportunity to think and rethink how humanity can be cultivated whether the steps and the solution as for as for the advice of the guru that you have reflected upon is really practicable or not so now uh, the 
talk uh, is uh, open for discussion. May I request Professor Thomas Quadras to carry on the interview session with her observation. Over to Professor Das. Thank you, thank you, sir. <coughs> I really appreciate uh, the talk of Dr. Rao. Uh, I shall, uh, I can summarize his talk in three sentences only, as far as my understanding. Dr. Rao uh, said that humanity is the highest value, that is the highest ideal. The second sentence is, why? Because that is the essence. That is the essence of a man, that is manhood. Therefore, that is the highest ideal. Essence is always highest. The third sentence, that essence is lost. So we are human beings with loss of our essence. That, that means we are human beings without humanity in different degrees because we have lost that essence. We have lost that essence in three different ways Jnana, Karma and Bhakti. Dr. Rao spoke about rationality, intellectuality. Dr. Spoke, uh, Dr. Rao spoke about the theory of a karma or action, what one should do, duty, and also he spoke about love, our attachment, our commitment, our fellow feeling. That is jnana, karma and bhakti, this much. That means we have to admit that the essence is lost in us and we have to compensate that by doing spiritual sadhana. That is the purpose of a human life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate your talk. Uh, today I really enjoyed I learned many things. I shall request um, Dr. Kalyan Sadanki, madam, to give her a response. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Thank you, sir. Kalyani Madam, will you speak? Okay. Prakash Ji, Prakash Ji. Please unmute, sir. Please unmute, sir. Sir, please unmute. Prakash, sir, please unmute yourself. Kalyani Madam will speak. Okay. Kalyani Madam, will you speak? Sir, sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes Madam. <coughs> First of all, congratulations, sir, for such a very beautiful way of presenting human dignity, particularly the four types of men. And uh, uh, we also, uh, in another way, I can say that there are people who says that nothing is enough for them, and there are people who says that something is enough, and there are people who says that anything is enough, anything. So just in that way, I can uh, compare the four ways of uh, talking about humanity, human, uh, talking about humanity, the highest dignity in that term. But basically, uh, um, I also agree with uh, K. Om Narayan sir, the way he began his discussion by citing Ukraine thing. And uh, I just... Uh, forgot to discuss the same thing in my presentation that is about Afghanistan where the situation of women are precarious I can say and this is very horrifying too so it's high time uh, we should uh, as uh, sir pointed out that either there are two options before us either we accept each other or we perish with each other so either we so the option is either we flourish together or we perish together so i also agree with sir on that account also and uh, very i congratulate uh, 
Keom Naran sir for uh, beautifully presenting the entire thing in a very systematic way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam, for your nice words. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Sir, please unmute yourself. Prakash, sir, please unmute yourself. Prakash, sir. Prakash, sir. You are not audible. Please unmute yourself and then tell. Please unmute your microphone, sir. Prakash, sir. Please unmute yourself. Sir, you are not audible, sir. No. Prakash, sir, please unmute yourself. You are not audible at all. Prakash, sir, how to... Okay. Sir, please somebody write a message. Write a message. Somebody is helping. Prakash, sir, you are not audible. Please unmute yeah. yourself. Okay. No, no, no. Am I audible? Audible, 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 sir. Now. Okay, sir. The question actually raised by Mr. Ka, Dr. Kailas and the explanation has been given by Dr. Om Narayanra for which actually we must thank you about humanity. And here somebody actually Dr. Kailas and Dr. Om Narayanra also in the site some example of Ukraine and he too and Mr. Uh, somebody Mrs. you know Kalyani I think actually uh, she raised the question of about uh, uh, Afghanistan and all these things in relate to humanity. But the thing is that actually it is a political issue where there is actually there is no value of humanity because of the reason, reason is that uh, the reason the, 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 is that actually they pursue only the win, the word win in the war for that reason and they used to be some advisors actually who serve their purpose but here you just look into the character of whom Mr. Putin, just he never you he, he never listens to any other advice. He simply just he listens to his own advice. And according to that, and there is a political situation in the Western parties actually which have uh, which have been trying to dominate uh, Russia and which have been trying to make slave to all other countries like uh, America has given a trade, uh, a sort of trade to India too, just a day before yesterday that actually if you will not sanction anything against Russia and if you will not just be away uh, from the relationship of Russia, you may be, if you are going to be attacked by China, then you will be lost the lose. It means it does it refers that actually that actually humanity here, I mean how much scale actually it plays that we have to look into the matter while we are talking about humanity and in regard to the confliction. And here we call we can we call it I mean confliction, not war. Special operation uh, actually said by USSR. I mean the West yeah. That's why in relate to all these things, you know, and Ahinsa was also a question actually which was raised and which was also attached to Gandhi's speech. Now I could not understand actually Ahinsa and non-violence is a quite different thing. Now the question also raises that non-urban people actually do not talk or do not uh, fight with the foe. But here yeah, when God says sought Gandhiji, there were only three bullets. But there had been four bullets. What about the four, one, one more bullet? What had happened and who shot it? This is all the question raised uh, for the cause of the for the cause of explaining the humanity. So this is my question, sir. This is my doubt, which ought to be uh, cleared up. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 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 What um, uh, Prakash ji tried to point out is well, I'm not touching uh, the political issue. I'm not concerned about what political ideas the people in the world carry. Okay, what the message Russia is trying to give, I'm not concerned about that. My only concern as a fellow human being, the suffering of the people. Okay, the pain that people are going through. Okay, the agony, the mental agony. Imagine say if we imagine ourselves in that state okay what would be our position 
can't that can't this be problem can't this problem be resolved to a mutual dialogue if this was so necessary so these are the questions that come to my mind i'm not raising this political issue i'm concerned i'm concerned about the human problem what at all this war is trying to get for us okay at the loss of innocent lives children women okay so the only message is if at all a war has to end up with a truce with a dialogue why not we resort things with a dialogue first why not okay we come up with a dialogue because whatever the war may be whatever may be the intensity of the war and after a great loss loss of great lives lot of many lives then we realize oh a great mistake we have done now this time that both the sides now are say tired even the russian soldiers are tired okay so now there is a feeling well we should come for a truce why that okay so my point is look from a human side look about the pain about the miseries the people have to pass through they have to go for food and a boy from karnataka he was he has gone out for getting food for himself and his friends and he was killed you see a loss of life a innocent life is lost for no fault of his is he connected with that war he was gone out to say to get rid of his hunger okay and the people around and he got died so this is a human question that i am raising i am not concerned about the political issues when humanity is at the stake and when truce has to be reached through a table of understanding why not that line of understanding be framed out for the sake of humanity on the cause of humanity this is my position and that i have tried to take now as regarding non violence you see i am talking of non violence in thought speech and action because violence breeds more of violence as gandhi would say violence breeds more violence and that is bringing in lot of bloodshed and that is again would result in a loss of great loss of lives loss of property and loss of many things so gandhi ji why he took non violence i should also tell you that when we were ruled by the britishers i am taking the political side now when we were ruled by the britishers they were mighty lot with modern equipments we were restricted to the lathis dust we had no weapons if we go by the by 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 the spirit of violence we will be crushed in no time so as a messia as a saint he had a great understanding if at all we have to deal with this mighty britishers non violence is the way and truly that is the way okay if something can be okay pacified if something can be resorted through the process of non violence why at all violence when it is going to result lot of bloodshed okay now having said this i also try to justify the contextual understanding of the principle of non violence i talked of a soldier lifting arms with an intention to protect his countrymen okay not with an intention of killing the enemy okay i'm saying not a, not with an intention of killing the enemy okay he, the only motive the only intention behind is protecting my own countrymen the innocent lives so that is the message even we make a reference to bhagavad gita okay when krishna advised not advised after giving all the deliberations krishna allowed arjuna to be free whether he want to fight or not to fight if he is not fighting 
adharma will prevail if he is fighting he is fighting for justice he is fighting for the restoration of dharma okay and lifting the arms for the cause of dharma again i feel is non violent it is is not violence it is not violence please underline because if you don't lift arms at that juncture adharma will prevail and that will result in a greater bloodshed than you have ever imagined or could have ever occurred in the mahabharata war so that's why being non violent makes you okay should should have an understanding that being non violent should also be taken contextually okay and if, the, if, if that is the understanding maybe humanity is restored there would uh, that would account for preserving humanity thank you something you want to say yes sir uh, sir please unmute please unmute please unmute please unmute am i audible now audible sir okay now actually violence also impairs the humanity because here the word used of violence and non violence by gandhi ji and dharma adharma by krishna actually there are the these words the exact was actually what we have the feeling in regard to humanity this is my question please explain no if i if i got to write i even um, to um, uh, uh, to uh, to the response to your question you see lifting the arms or arjuna's fighting for dharma as you pointed out that would also result in a loss of lives so is it not against humanity is it not bringing in human suffering so if that is the question the response would be if if arjuna would have given up the arms and he has kept away from fighting against adharma well well maybe there would have been no mahabharata war well and good but the time that could have succeeded would have seen greater injustice greater loss of lives greater inhuman activities much violence to women the way draupadi was treated all draupadis okay in the entire kingdom would have been treated the way because draupadi is someone who is so strong woman was treated so badly then there would be kalyani madam would add to that there would be women would be treated the way okay duryodhana would have loved to okay there would have been no dharma and there would be a greater loss of oil there would be greater loss of lives and that would have accounted for a greater 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 loss of lives and adharma would have been prevailed and that is never a that is never a good condition for humanity to prevail if at all we are talking of humanity there should be a sense of righteousness and if that righteousness is not protected if at all you are raising an arm to protect that righteousness it is your duty to protect it and that is not violence in my in my in, in my understanding because the motive is the protection of righteousness and that becomes the duty thank you sir thank you very much actually yes i have been explained and cleared my doubt and for which actually i am really very really grateful and the cause of procrastination of uh, attending this program is that actually actually i had been in uh, chennai now i came to canada for the day in this i got late so thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you dr rao for your beautiful beautiful presentation really wonderful Anybody, uh, okay. Okay. Sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, one concept of Dr. Rao that uh, humanity is an attitude. 
and dr kalyani has also clarified uh, the attitude of different persons and so the, uh, I, I would like to have a clarification then uh, now you cannot find a single country which uh, that is which is not uh, gathering the war material and all the countries of the world are now cultivating the war spirit right is it for establishing the humanity or is it for fighting for power and can we say that uh, that is having a war with others is for protection of dharma what is your stand on it why we are gathering all the countries why we are gathering war materials and why we, we all are cultivating the war spirit for our self respect for our self protection or for uh, protection of dharma or what do you mean yes you are, you are right in saying that um, nations all nations are busy developing their warheads they are ready with their army because there are chances anytime they may be attacked so having said this and this being the reality i would say that human beings as i said humanity is the essence we are human beings humanity is the essence but we have lost that essence okay it is time that we recognize we realize we realize this essence as flowing in each one of us i'm not saying that humanity is not flowing elsewhere humanity is flowing everywhere but there is a lack of realization of this human essence flowing in each one of us that's the problem okay and the other day i was talking of in this scientific world in the scientific living we have diverged from the life itself we are individually speaking we are not connected with our lives we are not connected with what we are that's why gor gopal das says you find your connectivity with your own true nature with your own true spiritual nature because that is your true nature and that connectivity is lost everywhere throughout the world and everybody is focusing on the external okay so it's the it's is the message for all that we are human beings and the connectivity with our own true nature is lost the realization that there is a human essence in all of us is lost and we are all busy with the external trying to build ourselves as power blocks to ultimately to perish because developing the warheads being prepared with for war is an alternative that you have taken to perish okay i said humanity has come with a, a crossroad with two alternatives either you accept universal brotherhood or you perish so if you are spending your warheads so you are sensing a danger and that danger will ultimately demolish entire humanity and this is the realization people should have and as i said the connectivity is lost and it is time that humans thinkers should come up with a greater force to realize that we are human beings it is a time to rediscover this human essence in all of us it is not a question of who won or who lost it is a question that innocent lives are lost it is a question that many tears okay have rolled down from the eyes many have bathed in the blood is it all required are we human beings we are much heinous than animals i know it's it okay sir strengthening your worth of warheads you have not understood your true nature you are not a human being i should say wonderful wonderful sir wonderful. thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you all thank you brahma sir
career sir so now you give word word of thanks and we shall conclude sorry on mute okay okay thanks so much pramesh sir for giving me the opportunity to offer my a gratitude to both the speakers and to all the viewers and the posting regions are connected with uh, this Sunday webinar. So today we all have benefited out of the of the talks given by Dr. Rao and Dr. Sarangi. Today they have uh, benefited us, they have inspired us and motivated us how to rethink on the current issues. And I don't find any word how to appreciate to uh, the talks that they have given. Today, uh, on behalf of Close family, I must uh, offer our gratitude to Prakash Ji, the way he has raised the questions and responded to our speaker and the way he has given his observation for the issue. I must uh, offer my thanks to Sabani Madam for her very pertinent question. And uh, Dr. Kalyani Madam and Dr. Rao also raised questions. And their questions and their responses have also motivated us, has inspired us. And we can see that this uh, session is a very good session and those who have not attended this webinar, they will be benefited out of the YouTube uh, channel. I cannot uh, find any word to appreciate the observations made by Professor Pramod Kwadas, the architect of philosophy family. And on every webinar, we can find a new way of thinking from his observation, from his way of looking at the things, looking at the matter given by the speakers. Uh, so with this, I must offer my gratitude to Professor Das, to Professor Rao, Professor Kalyani, and to all the question regions that are connected with us. With this, once again, I offer my gratitude to all the peers connected with us in today's Sunday webinar. And with this, I must request our host, Professor Pramod Padas, to wind up the session. I, I also thank you, sir, at the guardian of our family. <laughs> <laughs> thank sir, you. really, really, we are grateful to you. You are a silent worker. We are really karma jogi. Thank you, sir. Uh, so with this, this meeting will take place closed. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Namaskar everybody. Thank you all. Namaste Kalyan man. Namaste Pramod sir, Kalashar, no, and everybody. Thank you. Hey,